Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Hey there, this is Michelle Spiber, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Mwah! Join me on the flip as we start talking about how to turn all that bad stuff that's happening right now in your life. Yeah, your life. How to turn it into your good. Stick with me as I give you a simple recipe of three things that once you put them together and put them into action, you'll be well on your way to doing the very thing that people don't think they can do almost like wizardry. So stick with me on the flip and we will be talking about how to turn the bad into your good. See you soon. All right, let's go in and get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to be talking about turning bad into good. And as if you've been listening to me, first of all, thank you for that. I really appreciate you. I do. Uh, You'll notice that we've been in a kind of like preparation stage over here. I can't speak for other folks, but my tribe, we are preparing, uh, coming out of a chaotic time and into new beginnings with new rules, new orders. And so because of that, wisdom has had us on a path to get ready. So if you have been keeping up with us, um, we have talked about uh, such things as uh, waking up out of the lull and stopping mental thievery. We've we've talked about how to overcome our dopamine addictions to start refocusing. We've talked about mental fog and dullness. We've uh, talked about escaping the land of uh, of alchemy. No, not that one, of apathy. And how if you don't, then the byproducts of that uh, have to do with mental atrophy, meaning if you don't use it, you lose it. And then we then talked about activating the power of unlearning, unlearning those things that no longer serve us, those things that are just taking up space. They're like in your temp files of your computer, slowing everything down. And then we moved on to how to activate your authenticity because that is what's required now. No more can you wear the mask and the facades. You you must be authentic. And then yesterday, we talked about how to start making the bug truly stop here and being your own self-regulator, because you're not always guaranteed for there to be someone around telling you what to do or telling you that everything is going to be fine, or even fighting for your be- on your behalf. Uh, multiple nations are going through turmoil right now. And so it is up to us individually to take over the reins of making sure that we can provide for and take care of ourselves. And so today we are continuing with this wonderful, because I can't take credit for it, uh, this wonderful preparatory curriculum, if you will, that wisdom has us in to where now she wants us to be mindful to learn how to flip it and reverse it. Let me let me stop. Shout out to Missy Elliott. But she wants us to learn how to turn bad into good. And I'm just going to say it before you get to the good, there's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't feel so good, doesn't look so good, and can just straight up be classified as bad that you're going to encounter, that we're going to encounter. It's roughest before the dawn. But 
It's only as rough as it has to be and no more if you learn this power of transmutation, of alchemy, if you will, of flipping and reversing and and upgrading things that were maybe meant for your bad. You were able to turn them into your good and so on. So today, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about some elements that, you know, you might be like, oh, I don't know, but hear me out, hear me out. Uh, because if you can grasp on them in the way you can use them, they will show up to help you. So the first thing I want to say is this, that in dealing with the bad, dealing with the bad is not necessarily uh life ending bad as much as it is unexpected. Now, yes, it can, it can, hopefully it doesn't, but it can, you know, uh, include that, but dealing with the unexpected, dealing with the more, um, the morose of, of, of everyday living, uh, dealing with where everybody is saying the sky is falling, everything is doom and gloom, but learning how to turn it into your good. I did, um, few podcasts. (laughs) Uh, I did a podcast a while ago that talked about serendipity and how much I love that word. And it's unexpected delights as you go along your journey or your way. And it was taken from a book of three brothers who went on on various journeys. And uh, that's when the word first came into vogue, uh, talking about uh, the delightful, unexpected surprises that come along the way. And uh, it kind of talks or hints at how you can turn what might be meant for bad into good. It can be as simple as being diplomatic to turn those who would be your enemy into your ally. Uh, It could be something as simple as a state of mind change and an attitude change where just because everybody else might say, oh, it's doom and gloom, uh, the sky is falling, we won't survive this, you might not have to uh, accept that. You might be able to say, nope, I'm going to turn this into my good. And it brings me to another podcast where I talked about how we had such uh, advancements after huge uh, cataclysmic things that happen. And I talked about how if you were to do a study to go back and look at the aftermath and the history, just even from the turn of the 20th century, where they couldn't catch a break. They had, um, now I'm talking about U.S. history, you guys, uh, the Great Depression, World War I. Well, World War I first, then the Great Depression. Uh, then after that, uh, you had, um, the great, uh, potato famine, uh, don't forget the pandemic, the Spanish, I don't want to say that the American (laughs) flu, uh, right around, uh, the time, uh, during the, uh, uh, world war, uh, one and on and on. But if you look at the aftermath of what happened, for some people, it was cataclysmic. It was death. It it was destruction. But for a lot of other people, they were able to turn the bad into good. And as a whole, our country uh, expanded on its number of patents. Our technology uh, exponentially grew. Uh, So many new ways of looking at a new life happened. I talked about um, the other day, uh, the CEO of uh, Airbnb had a a, a quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it, where he said that in the last three months, more changes have happened than have happened in the previous 10 years, to something to that effect. And that is what normally happens when the script is flipped, when nothing is as it seems, when uh, nothing is going the way we are used to, when we're completely out of our comfort zone, and especially when chaos is in full force. And so I just kind of want to take this moment in my introduction to just remind you that when things look bad, that's when you can turn a lot of things into your good. Do not believe, and I'm going to use that word, do not believe the hype. Do not believe the story, the false narrative. Do not believe uh, 
the uh, expectations that it won't go well because we already know if you've been hanging with this, this tribe, we know that you tend to get what you expect, not what you just hope for. So change your expectations, change your ability to see. And that brings us into the first part that I want to talk about of turning bad into good. Now, looking at a lot of uh, stories, if you will, of people who succeeded, people who made it when they're see, uh, made a way when there seemed to be no way, people who basically turned things into their good. They don't normally use the same term, but it comes down to this. And that is that some kind of way they knew to build, summon, or command their uh, imagination to kick in the gear for them to paint a vision or a hope or even a faith, because we'll talk about that in a little bit, of what life outside of their current predicament would be. And over and over again, researchers, scientists have been able to replicate studies. You know, if you want to um, look at uh, all of the different uh, accounts of when someone uses things like imagination, vision, if you will, even physical vision, we already know that because someone looks at a certain item under a microscope, it changes just because they looked at it. They're on and on. I might not be saying it as eloquently as I would like to, but I hope that you get the gist of how an important element imagination is. And I'll say this, always be leery of people who try to make things taboo and woo-woo because you got to ask yourself, What do they benefit from you not knowing or not being willing to investigate that thing that they make you or try to make you feel bad about? What do you have to lose? And that's a a question that I kind of want you to sit with because I've I've had to sit with it. Uh, Why is it that people want you to shy away from the the things that cause you to strengthen your mental capacity. Have you ever considered that maybe it's because a mind at work, a mind unleashed is a formidable foe to those who would try to keep you enslaved and keep your mind attached to their vision, to their um, uh uh, they, I'm, I'm looking for the word and it's st- sitting here right here. Um, their contract with what they want to do. Have you ever thought about that? You know, and so be leery of that. But being able to turn your bad into good over and over again, we have seen where people have used the necessary ingredient of imagination. And imagination is not hard. Uh, most people say, well, you're not most people, but a lot of people say, well, I can't do that. You know what? It's okay. Some people can visualize. They can put themselves in another situation at the snap of a finger. Other people, not so much, but it's okay because guess what you can do? You can pretend. Yes. Pretend is just as powerful as visual. Don't believe me? Watch someone eat and see if you don't get hungry, especially if if you're um, interested in what the person is doing, eating or saying, or even if you just like the person. That lets you know how powerful that that is, where if you just pretend, you can still get the same outcome. All right. So you're saying, OK, Michelle, I'm willing to to test this out. So how do you use this imagination? Glad you asked. There are two other components that I want you to put in this this little mix. So you have your imagination. And then I want you to use something else that a lot of people might say was woo woo. (laughs) Or even they might try to claim it as some type of religious something, which it's not. It's for any and everyone. Religions just happen to be really good at using it. And that is faith. Now you might be like, well, what's faith? Faith is a lot of things. But what it is, is when it comes down to it, it involves action. 
it, it involves you doing something. So if you have imagination and you couple it with faith, that means that you start acting out your imagination. And the next component of this is going to be, are you ready? Confidence. Yeah. So confidence is a state of being. Yes, you can grow your confidence. Yes, you can work up to your confidence. But in certain cases, you can just call forth your confidence and be like, it is what it is. And it might be a little shaky at first, but as you continue to apply faith and use your imagination, guess what? You start to build and strengthen your confidence. All you need, and it's it's funny that this comes back and this is how a lot of um, religious texts talk about it. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed to give you the catalyst to activate these things. So when you're using your imagination and when you're employing that with the uh, grounding of confidence and using some faith, oh my goodness, you start to, are you ready? You start to open up the possibilities of opportunities. You see, mixing that trifecta of imagination, faith, and confidence allows your lens of your mind to start to show you different angles, angels, if you will, different ways of seeing the same thing. It causes you to divorce yourself from the uh, thrust upon you idea of how something should look. It's kind of like scales falling from your eyes where you're able to see past the curtain. You're able to see different and not just one thing. You're able to start to see different ways. That's why when I talk about the angles, they're the angels, you know, angle, angel. You're able to see the different fractals, um, the different uh, facets, if you will, of a thing to be able to make use of what you're now seeing. That's why it is so powerful. That is why a lot of people, uh, when they start doing the quote unquote woo woo, if you will, faith, imagination, you know, transmutation, all these kinds of things that people tend to tell them, don't do that. They tend to catapult ahead of other people. And I will tell you, you continue to do this and you start to learn to see and to accept what you see. That's why you have to have that little bit of confidence when you start out, because confidence keeps you from running away from what you see. So I want to break these down a little bit more, because when you're attempting to turn the bad into your good. Now, say for instance, you're like, okay, I got my imagination. I'm going to use a little faith. I'm going to believe in myself. And I'm going to engage the little bit of confidence I have. And I'm going to seek to see new opportunities, new ways of seeing this. What's going to start to happen? And I'm only, I can only tell you from my limited view of this. Um, Family members will tell you, they're like, I can't believe she did that. And I'm I'm telling you what I do of turning bad into good. Um, This is, like I said, this is something that wisdom wants us to know. And I'm happy about it because wisdom has helped me to do this over and over again. I have family members to this day will tell you, I don't know how she got out of that. I don't know how this turned out so great for her. But I saw it with my own eyes. So like I said before, I am not giving you theory. I'm giving you how I know I've done it, how I know I've shared with other people and how wisdom is now getting me to share with you. Okay, so imagination, faith, confidence, looking for opportunity. When you start to see the opportunity, you're going to need to activate your faith to strengthen your confidence because a lot of times what you're going to see, nobody else will see and it won't make any sense to anyone else. So you're gonna have to keep your mouth shut and just try it out. You're not going to be able to get anybody to give you a head nod of approval. You're not gonna be able to say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Does this make sense? Because it's not, it's not going to make sense because faith is the substance of things that you can't even see. If you can't see them, somebody else can't see them either. But this is because you are putting yourself into, and I like to call it opportunity boot camp. Oh, yes. And with a boot camp, that means that you're trying to shortcut 
getting strong in a certain area. And if you're trying to do that, that means that you're basically on your own. Your friends, your family, they're not on that journey with you. You've got to trust yourself. That's why your confidence is a little bit of the components that you're going to need. That's why you got to have faith. And that's why you have to have a, a, a whole bunch of imagination to get you through this. So this is going to help you to start reframing things to see the bright side of turning bad into good. You're going to get to the point where, and and I, oh, when this happens for you guys, please write me, uh, drop me a note. Let me know that it happened for you. You're going to get to the point where people are going to start telling you, you can't do that. That's just not done. And what's going to end up happening as you continue to work through this opportunity boot camp, two things. You're going to start to realize that nothing is as it seems at first glance. Nothing is as it seems at first glance, which means that that is code for you will learn to respect what you go through. You see, the very essence of the word respect means to look again with more scrutiny so that you can accept the qualities of what's really there. It means to look deeply into again. Don't gloss over. So as you're working through your opportunity boot camp, as you're looking at different angles, you're going to be able to see different loopholes. And so the other thing about what will happen. So the first thing that's going to start to happen, of course, is, you know, like I said before, you're going to start um, to be able to see that things are never as they first seem. The next thing is, is your question game is going to get on point. You are going to get to the point where you're able to ask higher vibrational questions. Yeah, I use that word, meaning that you're going to be able to ask the right questions that unlock and get other answers for you. I've talked about the hidden door in a few podcasts before, and this is that realm of the hidden door. This is that realm where millions of people will go in a certain a hallway, if you will, just, you know, figuratively, and they won't, it will just be a hallway. But because you are on this path, you are engaging in um, an opportunity boot camp where you're you're using your imagination, your faith and your confidence. You're going to see not a hallway, but you're going to see a hall full of doors to different ways. And they won't they'll be possibly standing right next to you and they won't be able to see it, access it or even know about it. So it's going to be a singular journey. I wish I could tell you that it's not. But hopefully, as you continue to grow and maybe, you know, you and your partner, your significant other, your kids, your family or whatever, you'll all be able to grow together. But the next thing that happens, I need to hurry up because I got to tell you a few more things. (laughs) The next thing is that you're going to notice. So the first thing is things are not going to seem look like as they did when you first looked at stuff. Things will totally look different. The next thing is, is you will be able to see, uh, uh, be able to uh, ask different questions that unlock hidden doors that you didn't know were there before because they're only able to be unlocked with the right key. And the right key is usually going to be knowing the right questions to ask the right people to give you access. And then after that, now are you ready for this? Remember I said, turning bad into good is you got to flip it, then reverse it. Y'all, that's alchemy. That means that what's normally going to happen is you're going to learn how to reverse the course and the curse, if you will, of the bad. And then you're going to be able to attune it to a favorable polarity. All right. I know that might sound gobbledygook. Stay with me, beloved. Stay with me. We're getting there. I promise we are. What you're going to do is when you start to see that this was bad, but I want to transmute it, turn it into good. Once you get access to these different doors, and when I talk about doors, I'm not talking about physical doors. I'm talking about different angles, different paths, different favors, different opportunities. All of this stuff is the same. 
you're going to start to see that there are ways for you to reverse the course of what was happening. And what will happen is you will start to learn how to reverse that course of the bad by changing the polarity of it. And that polarity, what that simply means is it means that you will be able to stop the forward movement of how it would have gone. Say, for instance, you need to figure out how to keep a roof over your head and you don't know where you're going to get the monies, right? Doing this, employing your imagination, your faith, and your confidence, looking for different opportunities, and then asking the right questions because faith is going to activate you to get out of your fear and go talk to someone, go look for resources. You will then be led to people that you're going to ask different questions. And because you're learning to ask different questions, you're going to unlock doors that other people didn't know about, favors that other people didn't know were available because they're only available to people on a certain level. And what will then happen is you will start to see where, oh my goodness, you can reverse this. You can stop the bad. Some people get very diplomatic to uh to get others to help them to stop the course of what was happening. Others, they get really good at, like I said, attuning polarity, meaning that they truncate, stop, make it a short so that what was going to happen that was meant for their good, they stop it at that point and they immediately push it to go back to the other way of good. See, that's the kind of stuff that's happening. That wisdom is like, I need y'all to trust me. I need you to work through this. I need you to move forward. And so understanding that in your life, there are pendulum swings in the energies that come. There are a lot of people that continuously push the pendulum in the in the, the direction of the bad with their expectations. Have you ever heard continuing to wait for the other shoe to drop? This is too good to be true. Good don't last forever. Who says? You can have degrees because believe it or not, good and bad are the same. It's just the different degrees. It's, it's just the law of rhythm. What swing are you in? It's the law of polarity. Which way has the pendulum gone? And if you know which way and you're using these things that I'm talking about, I'm giving you guys a whole bunch of stuff that a lot of people would hope that you wouldn't know because they hope that you stay dependent on them. But when you start activating and believing your faith, believe in yourself and using confidence to keep going, don't turn around just because you've never been there and don't turn around just because the people who you encounter don't know what you're trying to do. No simply means next. You keep moving. If they can't help you, that wasn't the right angle for you. That wasn't the right angel for you. Continue to move forward and understand this, okay? Understand that as you continue to move, you are building up your ability to handle or to survive larger opportunities. A lot of people don't get what they want because it would kill them. You have to earn, learn, and grow into the opportunities. There are some people who have unknowingly put themselves in the predicament where the bad continues to ravage them because they refuse to do this very thing we're talking about. They refuse to use a little bit of imagination coupled with a, 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 a bit of faith the size of a mustard seed and, and grasp on to that little bit of confidence that they can drum up just to make one step outside of where they think they have to be. Now, this is the wisdom smack of turning bad into good. As soon as you see the bars, destroy them. I'm going to say that again. As soon as you see the bars, B-A-R-S, destroy them. Whenever you are on the polarity of the bad, the negative, the things that don't do you any good, the things that cause you unnecessary suffering, because not all things that you think are bad are bad. I just want to say that. But the moment you see 
the bars, the the burglar, not the burglar bars, but the the cage, the bars, whatever it is, destroy them. And the way to destroy them is to elevate your thinking. And when I say your thinking, arrest any narratives, any stories that you are telling yourself or allowing to run on autoplay and loop in your mind. I'm talking about those stories of unworthiness where, oh, I don't know enough. I don't have this degree. I don't have that certification. They won't let me. All of that. I'm talking about, woe is me. Nobody has it as hard as me. Why can't I be like other people? Why is it so easy for them and not for me? I'm talking about, well, why do I bother anyway? It's just going to happen again. I'm so tired of this over and over again. I mean, I, you know, and I'm talking about, well, um, I need it to be perfect. I need it to be where um, if, if I just take a little more time to get a little more ready, then I'll be ready. No. Get rid of all of that. And when you start arresting all of those thoughts, and some of you might not have all of those, but for the ones you do, arrest them, get rid of them, demolish them. You will then start to see that at will, you will be able to take the things that come to you that are meant for your bad and turn them into your good. And you will get better at it and faster at it. And you will get to the point where people will look at you and think that you are a wizard. Because do you know what a wizard is? A wizard is simply a wise person who understands, obeys, and listens to wisdom and takes the uh, initiative to put into action what wisdom is showing us. So I challenge you today start if you got to start little start turning the bad into your good all right so guess what y'all yeah my time is up i thank you for yours this has been michelle spiver your practical priestess of wisdom with today's podcast of wisdom smack don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll talk to you soon bye And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.